It's time for baseball here on the show. Today, a spring training matchup between the Reds and their Ohio rivals to the north, the Cleveland Indians. What's going on guys? Welcome to episode number 26 of our Cincinnati Reds franchise. In this one, we've got spring training action just as the beloved Matt Vaskirjian told us. As you guys can see, we are taking on Corey Kluber. And with this stacked Reds offense, not so much new and improved. It's pretty much the same guys as last season. We are starting all of our starters. We do get the DH though, so Nick Senzel is playing DH and then Peraza at short. I still want to give him a tryout at shortstop. I know that Sinzel's got the better arm, and we're going to actually see some of that action in this video. So we can see top of the first here, Billy Hamilton leads us off, but is going to get thrown out, stealing third base. I did not end up showing that, but look at Joey Votto here, crushing a 3-2 pitch right down the middle off of Corey Kluber, who's one of the better starters in the major leagues, if not the American League, the major leagues for sure. Solo shot, could have been a two-run home run to get us off, started off right in the 2019 season. There's head coach Doug Crocale, so he's liking it, he's loving it. That's going to end the inning, though, as Kluber gets out of it. We can see the Indians starting lineup there, so a little bit of changes here. They do have Francisco Mejia in the batting in the ninth slot, so that's their big-time catching prospect. So it seems like that's what the Indians, they, they seem to always do that, you know, they they're stacked and then there's some years where they're really bad and they like rebuild the farm system and then they're good for like five six years again so they, they seem to be doing that same kind of formula here in the 2010s so you can see dallas keichel starting off his reds debut nice so strike out on leadoff batter there and then we've got Jose Ramirez up, who's going to hit a line shot out there to Scooter Jeanette after a Michael Brantley single. So you guys saw a quick little snapshot of that. And then we get Edwin Encarnacion striking out here on a two-seam fastball. Something that Keiko didn't really utilize a whole lot in this game. You guys will see. I don't cover a lot of the pitches that he does throw for strikeouts, just so you guys can kind of know that what to look out for because I'm not going to I'm not going to really mention that a whole lot. So just take a look in the upper left-hand corner just to get an idea of what's been working for him and whatnot. So we can see Jesse Winker going here, getting a single. So that's nice to see. He's definitely keeping that batting average up against uh, right-handed pitchers. So that's what we want out of him all season long because we we're thinking about trying to implement a little bit more of a platoon. And then we see in the very next inning, so we, we get Keuchel here with nobody down. He's up to around 19 pitches right now, and then we've got a leadoff double here by Francisco Lindor. So some early trouble brewing. Chris Johnson, a guy that we were actually, we weren't really looking at him, but we did highlight him because he is really good against left-handed pitchers. He's going to strike out on a questionable, a questionable call here. Change up low and outside is going to be called strike three. I don't know what the umpire here was thinking, but we're going to take this pitch. Look at this. I mean, center cut, half the ball was in, half the ball was out. After a, after another walk here, not another, but a walk, Lonnie Chisenhall comes up, and he is going to hit a three-run shot off of Dallas Keuchel. So the one thing about Lonnie Chisenhall, guys, is that he's just clutch. He's just clutch. He just comes through in, like, big situations, especially with runners in scoring position. He's just a, he's a good player. He's a good player. And you guys can see Brocale not too happy with that, so we are going to take Keiko out of the game. We don't want to stretch out our, our pitchers too much, our starting pitchers here too much. This is the first game of spring training. So we see Zach Weiss coming on in here, and that is actually the second fly ball out there to left field for Winker to finish off the inning. Let's go to the top of the third against Kluber, and look at Scooter. Scooter, the man, going to hit a solo shot off of Kluber on a 1-0 count. He's liking that. 400 and I can't see it from here though guys because the screen is a little small it might be a 432 or 423 home run that's a foot shot so let's check this out ground ball here to Scooter Jeanette from Peraza not going to get the call here not going to get the double play and I I think that's again just due to the arm strength I mean I I, I know he, he was like maybe six steps away from second base but Still, I got to put a little bit more oomph behind that, Jose. So we can see here, Lindor's going to strike out. Bat batter previous to that was going to strike out. 
I believe that was Jose Ramirez. It had to be, I think. I think it was either Edwin Encarnacion or Ramirez. But nonetheless, Zach Weiss gets out of that inning with two strikeouts. And then look at this. Jesse Winker turning on the Jets with that 46 speed is going to get a double with two down. So we're still in business trying to tie this game up. And this is good to see, guys. So Winker in his first two at-bats against right-handed pitching, that's Carlos Carrasco on the mound, is going to get a single and a double, both to the pull side of the field, which is a very, very good sign that he's seeing the ball. He's using his momentum. He's move, using his hands to get through. So he's, he's, he's having himself a nice little spring here. Maybe too early to say that, but I'm liking where this is going with him, especially against right-handed pitching pitchers which is what like I said before like what we want him to do so we got some subs coming in we got Tyler Goodell in right field Dilson Herrera gonna take over third base Paven Smith at first for Joey Votto and then Taylor Trammell in center field so we got a one and two count here and Chris Johnson who's you know better against lefties than he is righties Zach Weiss is just gonna take care of him here 0 and 2 on Logan Forsythe and that nasty, nasty curveball is going to set him down again on strikes. So, guys, the last four batters have been struck out. So that was Encarnacion. There's Lindor. And then now we've got Johnson. And then we got Forsyth. So Zach Weiss, guys, has just come in after that three-run home run by Chisenhall. And he's just absolutely shut these guys down. Speaking of Chisenhall, there he is right there hitting a the ground ball. Hot shot over there to Herrera is going to make the nice play. He had to, you know, he took his time there, which was which was good. We're gonna go with Brandon Finnegan though in the very next inning. This is the bottom of the fifth, maybe not the next inning, but a couple innings later, because we do need a ground ball here. And look at this. We're finally gonna get a double play. Nice job, nice turn there. I, I don't I don't know who to credit that mostly to. I think it it's gotta go to Scooter. But I mean Peraza was like if he was anywhere further away from second base, he probably would not have made that play. So Shane Bieber going to come in to relieve, and look who's coming up. We're still gunning for that tie. So Scooter Jeanette had that home run earlier in the second, yeah, in the second or the third inning, and now he's going to come up here, and boosh, he's going to hit a line drive out there to right field or left field, but Michael Brantley is going to make a nice play. So Scooter can't get it done, but hit it hard. Hit it hard. So this is a good sign for Paven Smith. Can he come through, guys? Can he tie the ball game up? Boosh! Yes, he can. That was a little more emphatic. And yes, that ball is going to go over the fence. It's going to be a tie ball game here. Paven Smith hits a solo shot. I think that's 399 foot bomb. So Shane Bieber, I think his day is done after that. Had to get the two lefties. He got one of them. He did not get Paven Smith. But this is a great sign for Paven Smith. I love this guy against right-handed pitchers. We're, we're kind of st stacked with left-handed batters, like I said in the spring training video um, or the off-season video. We're, we're very stacked with left-handed hitters. We do need to get some more right-handed hitters in this lineup. But look at this play by Jose Ramirez. He's going to rob Tyler Goodell of a nice base hit there. Probably would have been a double with his speed. So Brandon Finnegan did his job. Now we're going to go to Matt Harvey here in the bottom of the inning. And then we've got, I think that might have been Lindor. But regardless, he's going to get a nice easy out there to Winker. And then we've got Edwin Encarnacion up with 0-2 count. And playing, <laughs> he hit it right into the shift, kind of, in a way. Might have been on the opposite side. But Scooter Jeanette up the middle. And, you know, nobody can make a play. So he's going to roll in there with a double. Here's Lindor. And he's going to lift a little lazy fly ball out there to center field. Looks routine, but Trammell not going to be able to handle it. Makes an error. You know, he had he had an error like that uh, in September, which was kind of concerning. So, you know, his defense is nowhere near Billy Hamilton's defense. So that's kind of something we, we got to really work on. Uh, with Trammell. So nice job by Scooter Jeanette there to get that line drive out. And then Forsyth again going to disagree with the ump. I mean, the Indians are not liking this guy's strike zone at all. But Harvey gets out of the jam. That's kind of concerning. I don't like to see that with a potential number five guy is, is getting into jams. Like, you, you don't want that. You want, you want guys to get those easy outs like Zach Weiss, even though he's not even being considered for a starting 
job. He just doesn't have the stamina. You know, you, you don't want to see your potential number five guy getting in jams constantly, which is, seems to be Harvey's M.O. Am I right? So here's Jose Peraza. <laughs> Let's talk about Jose Peraza here. I mean, we're not going to get a lot of chances to talk about a Jose Peraza home run, so we don't mean to cut him short there, but he's going to break the tie in a 4-3 to three game. And look at Tucker Barnhart. He's going to go deep. I mean, the outfielders weren't even in the warning track by the time the ball got out. That just tells you how hard he hit this thing out. Dan Otero is visually upset. He's he's given up home runs to guys who don't have a lot of power, back-to-back -back bombs, and then Taylor Trammell is going to go deep for a back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. That's crazy. 424 or 429 foot shot that's I mean that's crazy Otero doesn't know what to do right now he's just giving up gopher balls check out where this pitch is located right now guys I mean I mean uh, look at that that's right down the middle that's right down Main Street so they do end up making a pitching change finally Matt Belisle is gonna come on in there are two outs now in the inning mind you just keep that in the forefront of your mind here. And here's Scooter Jeanette. Can he keep it going? He's going to hit a long fly ball again. And center fielder's going to give chase, and he's still not going to get it. This is going to be four home runs in a row. And you saw Belial's face there. He's just, whew, wow, these boys, these boys came to play today. I mean, goodness gracious, that's that's got to be a record back to back to back to back home runs and then now we've got another chance to get five home runs in a row but Paven Smith had a 2-2 count that was a strike so just put a good swing on it get on base so that's another hit for the Reds here now here's Dilson Herrera can he keep the home run streak going here he uh he can't center fielder's gonna track it down but guys the Reds just took a four well a three to three game and made it seven to three here in the bottom of the well the top of the seventh and now we're going to go with hunter green just to shut these guys down you know a two-run shot for the indians is going to make this a two-run game so you got to still be careful here but look at this hunter green is just filthy right now fastball strike circle change strike and he's going to go with that circle change high and in, inside and then it's going to break i mean that's that's nasty could you guys imagine trying to face that? You got 96 fastball moving as a running fastball. It's got a ton of movement. And then he throws you two straight changeups when you're probably looking for his best pitch, a fastball. He's going to throw that circle change yet again to Francisco Mejia, and he's just not, he's not even going to touch it because you can't time him up. And, and he's going to go fastball here on the outside and low to set him up for 0-2. What's he going to decide to go with right here? I'm thinking fastball. And he does go fastball, 96 on the outside corner with movement. I mean, that's that's nasty. So Hunter Green making a big impact here in spring training in his first game, his first appearance. And then now we're going to go, we're going to speed things up here. It's, it is still 7-3 to three ball game here. We're going to go with Michael Lorenzen in the very last inning, the bottom of the ninth, trying to close these guys out. We do have a runner on first base. And this is going to be a shot by Logan Forsythe. That was actually a hit batter. So Lorenzen was trying to get a curveball to break on the inside corner, but it just didn't break, thus leading to the hit batter. And then Forsythe takes a cut fastball that just didn't cut enough to the outside for a home run. But Chisholm Hall is going to strike out on a nasty curve. So I do want to work on that curveball for Lorenzen because I think that's a good pitch for him. And then, and then especially that cut fastball. Mariano Rivera as a closer, Kenley Jansen as a closer. Both those guys use cutters uh, to, to be really effective. So I, I want to get that working for Lorenzen, but he's going to do a job. So Reds win 7-5. to What would you guys think so far of spring training? we got one more game of spring training to show. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.